Namaskar and a very warm welcome to everyone joined in today on our week 69th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. This talk is being organized by the Central Zoo Authority New Delhi as part of the ongoing Azadi Tamrit Mahotsa. Mm -hmm. The Mahotsa is a 75 week long celebration to commemorate 75 years of India's independence, which falls on the 15th of August 2022. Central Zoo Authority is taking the celebration forward through a massive outreach campaign entitled Conservation to Coexistence, the People Killing It. Under the helm of this campaign, we will be showcasing 75 conservation priority species and 75 zoos, highlighting one species and one zoo each week. We are currently in week 69 of the celebration, with the lesser adjutant as the species in focus and the Jungle Mahal Zoological Park as the zoo in focus. So joining him today to speak to us on the species is Dr. Hilal Jyoti Sindha, who is the professor and the head of department of zoology at the Bodoland University, Assam. Dr. Singha has done his master's in zoology with specialization in animal ecology and wildlife biology from the Guwahati University and doctorate in wildlife sciences from Aligarh Muslim University. He has worked in the field of biodiversity and natural resource management for over two decades and has published and has and have published about 73 research articles and 10 book chapters. He has also been a guide to more than 13 doctoral and PMP students. He will speak to us today more on the greater and the lesser adjutant stroke, which is our species and focus for today. And uh, I will request Sir to please begin the talk. Namaskar, everybody. Thank you, uh, Arundhati, Madam. And thank you, Central Juro Authority, to give me this opportunity. Though I was not at all ready for that. But anyway, for the sudden call, I appear to be here. When the, probably I would not be. Uh, satisfy you, but because it is not only lesser student, but I will be speaking rather greater student, but side by side, I will also be speaking to lesser student because these are all congenital species. Okay, so without wasting time, let me start with my presentation first. Uh, can I share, please? Please go, please go ahead, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, you, can you see my screen there? Yes, sir. Yes, so yes. this is the beautiful campus of Portland University. During the lockdown, last lockdown, the grass grew a bit lush green and it, was, it wore a very good looking <laughs> region anyway. So I'll be talking about greater students, uh, breeding biology, nesting ecology and all those things and a little bit conservation of this. So, <clears throat> it's called, it's not coming in, okay. So, out of the 20 stock species in the world belonging to family Siconidae, the 11 are found in Southeast Asia, and out of these, nine species are occurring in Assam as well. And this particular species is found, uh, as you have been noticing here in the petty field, and though it is endangered in, in Ives and Criterion, it is both uh, colonial as well as gregarious. And, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, but this uh, greater children, lesser children belonging to same genus, Leptotilus, and here there is a difference between these two species. Of course, greater is greater in size, and lesser is smaller, and there is a bulk region in the forehead, you can see. In Assamese, it is called Tokola, and that's why its name is called Bortokola. On the other hand, it's called Hargila. Har means bone, and Gila means swallow, to swallow. That means it ultimately depicts the habit of greater children. That means they uh, swallow bone as well. And the counterpart is a um, marabou stock in, uh, in Africa, almost similar food habit with the getter adjutant. So anyway, now earlier, <clears throat> a century ago, these species had been sprayed around in South Asian countries, both greater as well as lesser adjutant. Lesser adjutant used to, used to be uh, more available than greater adjutant earlier. And uh, however, and there was a massive decline in the colony in the Myanmar region. And people used to think from Myanmar, they used to migrate to Kolkata during non bidding season and go back like this. So ultimately, this colony was devastated, and now only in <clears throat> these pockets are there. And international population is Cambodia and India. These two populations are existing now. And within India, there are there's a stronghold is found in the Brahmutra Valley of Assam, and few uh, breeding species are found in Bihar as well. So of late, it was discovered, and. <clears throat> In during British area, that even the logo of Kolkata municipal area, Kolkata municipality was the greater adjutant. So it ultimately 
uh, signifies that how common this species was, and it was, re, re, I mean, uh, related to the garbage dump, and that's why the municipality had taken it as a logo. And prior to this, I would like to, I mean, <clears throat> show my regards to my gurus, uh, Dr. Asad Rafi Nurmani, who was my supervisor in PhD, Professor Fitis Bharadji, and Professor Prasan Swikia, who was my elder and senior to my uh, Guwahati University. Alumni, alumni meet, but uh, these people actually were pioneer worker of this adjutant and Professor Bharadji and Sekia, they discovered that adjutant nesting colony outside the protected area for the first time in 1989. Of course, they had been there, but people, uh, some laymen knew, but not the scientists. So it was a discovery at the time. And since then, uh, many work happened been done after that i took up uh, took it up as a graduate student and dr professor Sakya got his phd on research journal. and next dr punya dibi bormon as you know her who was recipient of green in 2017 and dr zadab mandal they worked on the same space in the same area on different aspects and later mr orvin the mister who is uh, from uh, uh, <clears throat> i mean uh, related to mandar nature club he also initiated some conservation effort long back in 2001 uh, Professor Sunil Choudhury from Bhagalpur University had discovered greater adjutant in the near Vikram Shila wildlife sanctuary. So that was the beginning of uh, Bihar population. And then in 2006, Aurobind Mishra also saw uh, them in Bihar and he found the nesting colonies in a village. And then onwards, uh, the journey of better adjutant both in Assam and Bihar began. Way back in 1994-95, when I got the opportunity to do my doctoral research, then I surveyed the entire Brahmatra Valley by motorcycle on the other side of the national highway and uh, whenever wetland was nearby, outside the protected area, that was the significant one to, I would like to say, outside the protected area we surveyed and then there was no system to survey so far actually. That time uh, we found nearly about 600 cattle chickens uh, in Assam, uh, particularly in Brahmadar Valley. And I did not do on Borak Valley. So I would like to say, along with the greater adjutant, I would uh, I also did survey about the lesser adjutant data were there, but I did not analyze. But again, I would like to say, during the non beating season, there are 40, 400 odd lesser adjutants were found <clears throat> during that time. And later on, as I, as you see, in nine townships, greater adjutants were found in slaughterhouse, in markets, in the offal house, all those things because because of their habit. They go to those areas during the non breeding season. So that was why it was very necessary to survey greater adjutant in the both uh, during uh, non breeding as well as breeding season. Unlike greater adjutant, lesser adjutants do not go to the garbage dump. They always uh, feed in the local, uh, sorry, in the natural wetlands. This is the main difference. So we have discovered 11 breeding colonies in uh, Assam. And you can see the background of this building colony, all is a semi-urban semi area. And uh, in the village, that was the main uh, stronghold of the building colonies of Gator Jutin. And here is a comparative chart. You can see that means <clears throat> the both lesser as well as greater Jutin nesting colonies around in the entire Hormuthra Valley. And in central Assam, Nogao, you could see as many as 55 nesting colonies and 28 nests were found in there. So I put up my field stations here on the base of this. And I still, whenever I was observing getter at the same time, lesser adjutants were also around. And in some trees, I found both the species nested together. <clears throat> so you can see another view of the juvenile of lesser adjutant. It's uh, sorry, juvenile of getter adjutant. It looked like lesser adjutant from a distance, but see the brown say, uh, primary feathers. And as I told you, there are no less than 71 pairs of get uh, get bred during that period. And it, the breeding colony was very much near to human settlement. And then nesting colonies, as I told you, most of them were in private forests. That is mixed, uh, these home gardens. And it is a bird's eye view. That means from a top of the <clears throat> top of the sky, you can see this is like a forest. And Though it was a district headquarter town, the, the houses were be, uh, hidden behind, but probably the students uh, preferred this as a kind of good habitat for that. So it is the, again view of this. Then I put some discussion questions actually that why whether the nesting trees were different from the non nest trees in terms of tree architecture, or what features of trees and surrounding environments were actually important for the nesting colonies, and was there any particular species uh, preferred by getter student for breeding? Anyway, so we also 
uh, took some habitat parameters like nearest road, near the nearest water source, nearest grazing ground, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we try to compare the non-nesting trees and nesting trees within certain radius. The, this is a picture of Dodra where Dr. Purnia Devi Brahman and Dr. Joydev Mandal worked on these, which was not my field study area. But here also I found all the nesting colonies just behind the household, you can see. And it was very um, traditional. That is very important that some nesting colonies were 50 years and more than years. And there was a bamboo screening on the rainy nesting colonies. There is a picture of village of Assam. And that's what you can say that is, <clears throat> is required. And that's why you can see the other parameters. I mean, 97% of nesting trees were within 100 meter of nearest road. That means they're quite habituated with human settlement. And uh, the water source also very nearby. Even the forcing ground that is non breeding season is also not more than three kilometers. These are all resources were available at that time. Then I would like to say that of the 62% of nesting trees were within 25 meter radius from a house. So we can understand how close would be. Now you can see this photo, this new houses have been coming up. So this is one of the reasons I would like to tell you later on. This ultimately destroys the habitat. And all colonies were traditional. This is very important. That means that has been, uh, the particular species have been nesting there for a long, long time. So it is very important then. <clears throat> then some statistical analysis we did and we found that the, uh, nesting trees were always larger than the non-nesting trees in terms of their uh, diameter at rest state, canopy area, and, and uh, also uh, the height, all those things. And that's why the relative height of nest was found uh, not significant in all the colonies. That means it proved that they preferred the upper canopy, top canopy of the trees. And the trees which were having more number of nests, they also had a, uh, they were also larger. So which means the Geta Jutin actually preferred the larger trees. And we found that Kodamba, that is called Anthocephalus Kodamba, was uh, this is the species, actually was most preferred among the 10 species of uh, nesting species. However, in terms of uh, lesser children, the number of nesting species were more, and those three species were smaller than in comparison to the greater adjutant, I could say like this. And almost they did similar nesting size, nesting pattern. They also did in the same village, or even I saw the, both the species were nesting in the same tree. So in conclusion, you can see, we can tell that Okay, the other children preferred the compact nesting colonies. That means the nesting trees were very much close to each other and they need a vegetation cover and they could live uh, along with other, uh, other uh, individuals in the same nesting colony near to human settlement, but they should be very traditional. That means they have been doing the nesting for, for many years. That was the main important thing. So followed it by, I did some reading biology study and I raised up some machan, 65 feet tall, as well as 75 tail in two breeding, successive breeding seasons. And we could do it in Nongao. And you can see from this kind of natural markings, we can easily identify uh, those individuals. Even sexing was very uh, easier because the mating position, you can sex them out. And uh, then uh, so many beautiful stories coming up. Actually, I was the pioneer uh, uh, to study the breeding biology. And that's why some things came up because prior to me, Professor Prasan Swekia, when he was a student research scholar, he did, he had done study on lesser adjutant stock. And even if I compare now, then I can found that this, uh, the greater adjutant uh, was uh, having a more long uh, fledging period that I'll tell you later on. But now we can see as many as four eggs could be left, but four eggs were very rare. Two egg class was uh, more frequent. And the both the parents incubate and uh, there is no bar that is which will uh, include more and which will take care of more. So they do alternatively uh, this all guarding and all the things, including et cetera, et cetera. It is seen in less, lesser children as well. So lesser children also does the same behavior. However, the incubation period is more in case of breeding, uh, in case of greater children, 35 days, but in lesser children, it is about 30 days. Other historic species also like Magoristic, it is the 28 days and so on. And right from the hatching, chicks were very much uh, for us versus feeder, and both the parents bring food to the nest floor and regurgitate it there, and they swallow them. And these are the food you can see right from small fish to even the ducks were brought in the nest floor. And see some offals from the garbage dump as well as some uh, uh, dead bodies who carry on. They can bring it to this. 
And this is the difference in between lesser and greater children. Lesser children do not eat all those things. They are only frogs and some reptiles as well as fish. But whole vertebrate food is very important because of the calcium supply during the up, uh, up, during the uh, chicks development actually. Because they are very voracious feeder, they have to grow faster. And I was the first to witness the hatching of greater children and see it is beautiful location actually when I saw it. And six week old chick can defend itself. <laughs> when something is coming from some airborne uh, birds were there, they were they try to show their resistance. And after uh, nine weeks, they attain the ju <clears throat> juvenile, juvenile stage and they fledge asynchronously. That means not necessarily the first has chicks would fledge first, and it takes about 142 days. So it is very very long period. So this is important. Then this is crucial also. <clears throat> and fledging success was not so much. Only less than one bird, one particular bird could hatch, uh, could fledge out of a nest. So this is one of the causes, maybe for the rarity of greater children as well. In case of uh, lesser children, it is uh, more. And Dr. Raymond also did some ethograph of greater children, which is actually in detail. But anyway, the greater children foraging habitat can be of two types. One is the natural wetlands, another is the garbage dump, where from they bring all those things. And that's why it is the, it has to be studied in both areas. And that's why I went to the garbage dump. It is the garbage dump in Guwahati. And one of my friends came all <clears throat> from outside England and we studied there. And I found that they were opportunity feeder. Whenever there is rain, they go out of this garbage dump and try to go the natural food. So it is a photograph of taste food town. They come in the market. They are found loitering around the uh, Kolong River in Nogao and get <clears throat> Guwahati. Karchi, I mean, Nomita Brahma has taken the photographs for me. So we found there was a significant difference between the adult as well as juvenile in terms of their behavior. However, uh, they sustained for a few months only. That means almost three months they stay there. And Purnia Borman also studied about this <clears throat> forcing strategy in the garbage dump. So this is crucial. The long breeding season compared to very small uh, season of non breeding season. So that's why they need uh, continuous supply of food. And it seems the catechisms are opportunity feeder, as I already told you about. And that's why food requirement is a crucial factor for their survival. <clears throat> so besides natural wetlands, they go any inundated areas like the paddy field or wherever, in search of frogs, in search of fish, and so on. Now, coming to the thread, actually, where Professor Bhattacharji and uh, Saikia had uh, listed many causes, uh, for example, biological right to from political, social, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all general causes. You can say the debited habitat destruction and all, uh, but they are something, for example, as I told you, wrong breeding season, the late breeders, sometimes I saw the, they starve to death. That means they could not bring food. So there might be a competition between the human being and the greater children. So right now, the people are collecting exhaustively the fish, even by using mosquito net. That could be another factor for that. And they have to go farther away. I have saw them. They uh, went up to 20 kilometers the way to, because I could mark them. And uh, then I found they go up to that area, but still if this uh, consumes more energy, so food is requirement is more. And sometimes they're killed. They're killed by off, out of no reason actually. And sometimes they're found dead in this, and we didn't know what that might be the reasons, but I could speculate because this wetland is nearby petty field and people may use the pesticide and also there could be because these spaces we do never know it is a top carnivore and because of these the <clears throat> there is a biomagnification could occur and the uh, actual thinning could occur these are all other factors associated with my friend Mukibu Roman actually witnessed this phenomenon then awareness campaign was important and we did also and that's why we found the nesting colonies uh, which were traditional that's very important I saw once a greater children coming back to the same tree which was already felt that means this is the leg period. It is not necessarily that trees are already no more. The trees are there, but still they would try to come back to the same tree once again, again and again. And we did the massive uh, awareness campaign in different places uh, in, in, nearby the uh, nesting colonies. And we could raise the chick from this. I made an artificial nest like this, and we tried with, along with my assistant, depending on the dead, and we could raise them up and we could release them back to the wild. This was successful with this experience and we did it bigger way with the help of green guard natural organization and arendak and we are quite successful see how many i mean chicks were i mean uh, raised up and ultimately we let them release in the field so it was quite successful 
Then Purnima Devi Burman also has a massive uh, care awareness campaign she did. She is now called Hargila Baidu, that means Hargila sister, because of all those things. She has been uh, gearing up with the Hargila army, etc., etc. Then the same nesting platform she did uh, with the help of, uh, I mean, with the idea. She got it from my earlier work. And then Orvin Misra, as I visited in 2014, to suggest them that why not you do the same rescue system. Then again, in 2017, it came up. And he was also good. So they see the puddle of water so that these theater students were trained how to catch live fish. That means they were not fed just like this, but they were trained and so that they can thrive later on when they release them back to the wild. And with this, Orvin Misra was successful, raised them up and foreign tourists also came to see, unlike in Assam, it is not popular as like uh, rhino, but in Bihar, for even forest police came to the village and just to see the gadget. He has mobilized the forest department as well, and he could raise uh, from 78 birds in 2007 up to 600, according to his statistics in 2019. So it is a quite successful story about. So with this, I would like to conclude because I have to finish within 20 minutes. So thanks to all the people who had been uh, with my research work. And along with my Philistine to all the people of Nogao and everywhere. And thanks to the Central Jew Authority of India, particularly Ms. Orundhuti, uh, because she has given me this opportunity and platform. Thank you to accompany me in the flight of Get Ready Today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for the comprehensive talk, not just on the desk, mm -hmm. but on the greater adjutant and the kind of work that's being done throughout the years on the conservation for its conservation. We will take question answers for this session at the end. We will now move on to the Know Your Zoo talk of today's session. So join them today to speak to us on the zoo with Mr. Partha Mukherjee, who is the Assistant Divisional Officer of the Jhagram Division. And he is going to speak to us more on the zoo in focus. So I'll just share the presentation for you. Is it visible? Uh, yeah, it is visible. Okay. Fine. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to all the distinguished guests present over here. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Central Zoo Authority for giving Jamalbal Zoological Park this opportunity to showcase our activities as part of 75 week long celebration of Azadirka Amrit Mahotsav. Now I am Partha Mukherjee, Assistant Divisional Forest Officer, Jhargram Division, would like to take this opportunity to give a brief presentation on Jungle Mahal Zoological Park, Jhargram. Uh, next slide, please. Now Jungle Mahal Zoological Park was started as a deer park in the year 1980 in a small patch of Poppy's Shal Forest on the outskirts of Jhargram town of West Bengal. Subsequently, it was recognized as a small category zoo on 9th September 2005. Uh, since 21st September 2017, it is recognized as a medium category zoo. Uh, uh, the zoo is spread over an area uh, 21.54 hectare within a beautiful coppice shawl forest of lateritic ecosystem and having natural water body within the zoo area and perennial water course along the eastern boundary. The, loo, uh, the zoo landscape is uh, shown in the slide. You can see the landscape, the uh, water body well inside the zoo. It is available. And now the zoo is situated at the uh, within the municipal limit of Jhargram town, uh, uh, approximately three kilometer away from Jhargram station. And it is almost 170 kilometer away from the state uh, capital, Calcutta. Uh, next slide, please. And the major objective of the zoo can be shown in the, uh, it can be seen in the slide that is showcasing rich biodiversity of lateratic ecosystem, education and awareness, rehabilitation of uh, rescued animals and captive breeding of some important identified species and recreation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, it can be seen in this slide, the zoo landscape. This is the, the first picture is the enclosure of one of the herbivore enclosure and the second one is the visitor's path. It is situated well inside a coppice shawl forest. Uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, speaking about the birds present in the jungle wall zoological park, I would like to share the pictures of flying bird aviary and pheasantry. Now, in flying bird aviary, we have different kind of parakeets we have different kinds of uh, 
think cocktail hill moina etc and in pheasantry section uh, we have four kind of pheasant that is golden pheasant silver pheasant uh, lady armhurst pheasant and college pheasant uh, next slide please uh, next slide please now as part of the enclosure enrichment uh, it can be seen uh, the uh, this slide now uh, speaking about the enclosure enrichment it can be seen that elevated wooden structure with proper shed with natural material like straw and bamboo have been provided in the present enclosures and in case of apart from that we have red jungle fowl peacock vulture hawk emu also in our zoo and uh, jungle mall zoological park also host lesser adjutant stork locally known as uh, modern duck or hargile which is the species of the week and already has been discussed by my fellow panelist uh, next slide please now speaking about the animal section i would like to mention about the few flagship species of our zoo the uh, it can be safely said that leopard is the flagship species of our zoo and it can be seen in the slide that jungle mall zoological park used to host two leopards named sohel and horshin both rescued from the north bengal and later rehabilitated in jungle mall zoological park in the year 2020 horshin gave birth to male cubs so now the total number of leopard in jungle mall zoological park is four uh, next slide please Uh, it can be seen from the slide that as part of the enclosure enrichment we have provided wooden bridge hollow wooden logs etc and a small fish pond also provided to play and explore that all can be seen in these uh, slides and as part of the safety measures energized fencing has been provided and the entire enclosure along with the night shelter and keepers gallery are brought under the purview of cctv coverage with live streaming option with the zoo manager uh next slide please now this is sloth bear enclosure jungle mall zoological park currently hosts three number of bears this enclosure is open and surrounded by dry moat now natural looking cave structure water pond wooden logs wooden bridges have been provided as part of the enclosure enrichment and we have also that hanging tire for playing uh next slide please now in case of uh, we have also indian grey wolf and hyena at present jungle mall zoological park has six number of indian grey wolf and four number of hyenas in both the enclosure we have provided shade trees resting places with elevated wooden structure wooden logs uh, water ponds etc to explore and play uh, next slide please we also host fishing cat and jungle cat fishing cat is the state animal of west bengal currently uh, jungle mall zoological park has six number of uh, four number of fishing cats and five number of jungle cat in both the enclosure we have provided shade trees resting places with elevated wooden structure wooden logs water ponds with live fishes inside it to explore and play uh, next slide please now in case of herbivores we have uh, four species of herbivores that is spotted deer we have total 90 number of spotted deer sambar deer we have six total six number of sambar deer 27 number of nilgais and almost 18 number of barking deer in each enclosure we have sufficient feeding stalls uh, resting sheds quarantine enclosures and natural water body in all the enclosures the last in the last picture in the slide can be seen that feeding structures are provided and all safety measures are taken while serving foods to the to the herbivores uh, next slide please now in case of primate jungle mall zoological park currently have uh, has three now three species of primates that is bonnet macaque rhesus macaque and assamese macaque and in, in in case of enclosure enrichment we have provided sufficient number of hanging ropes swings elevated wooden platforms etc are present in each enclosure for these primates 
नेक्स्ट प्लीज वी हैव अ जंगल मॉल जूलॉजिकल पार्क हैज अ सेपरेट फैसिलिटी फॉर रेप्टाइल्स एट प्रेजेंट टोटल फोर कैटेगरी ऑफ स्नेक्स आर प्रेजेंट एट जंगल मॉल जूलॉजिकल पार्क स्पेक्टाकल वी हैव स्पेक्टाकल कोबरा मोनोक्लेट कोबरा रसल्स वाइपर एंड इंडियन रॉक पाइथन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट जंगल मॉल जूलॉजिकल पार्क आल्सो हैज वाटर मॉनिटर लिजर्ड एंड येलो मॉनिटर लिजर्ड एंड नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज आवर जू आल्सो होस्ट डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ टर्टल एंड टॉर्टोइजेस इट कैन बी सीन इन द पिक्चर दैट वी हैव इंडियन सॉफ्ट शेल टर्टल वी हैव स्पॉटेड पॉन टर्टल ट्राइपनेट hill turtle and indian star tortoises next slide please and in case of utility for visitors we have one nature, nature interpretation center and we have proper signages in vernacular language in all the important junction of the zoo as well as outside the enclosure apart from that we have stand up barrier placed outside every enclosure for the safety of visitors uh then the zoo is also covered the zoo also been brought under the purview of cctv coverage for the safety of the visitors it can be seen in the slides apart from that we have a uh, food court yet to open and uh, toilet facility drinking water facility and sitting arrangement also have been there for the visitors uh, next slide please in case of veterinary support we have a full time veterinary officer veterinary assistant and a well equipped veterinary hospital for the in house treatment of zoo animals it can be uh, we in the hospital we have operation theater autoclave machine microscope etc along with a lab for elementary elementary diagnosis and to uh, for the treatment of the zoo animals apart from that regular health check up has been carried out dietary supplement also provided to cope of the scorching summer heat that is quite common in this part of bengal uh, next slide please now uh, talking about the major achievement of this zoo the, uh, first of all i would like to mention that the role played by the jungle mall zoological park in treatment of rescued elephant because uh, this part of bengal is known for acute human elephant conflict situation basically this landscape has become the part of the migratory route of approximately 160 to 180 elephants whenever any ele elephant cub rescued in distress condition or whether any elephant requires any emergency treatment jungle mall zoological park had catered timely intervention to deal with this situation few recent incidents have been shown in the slide in the first slide it can be seen that one adult elephant is getting treatment from jungle mall zoological park it used to frequently enter into human habitat and was causing serious threat to human life and property in the year 2017 it was tranquilized and brought to jungle mall zoological park for necessary treatment later it was sent to jallapara national park and now it is working as a kunki elephant and given name as kunjoresh it was a rare feat achieved by the jungle mall zoological park and its team members in the next picture it can be seen that it is the last Uh, uh, last year one more elephant cub was rescued in severely injured condition it can be seen from the uh, slide that uh, a separate crawl was made and necessary medical facility was provided to the cub and was kept under close monitoring for 24 into 7 lastly due to the sincere efforts from the staff of jungle mall zoological park it recovered and was sent to the jungle mall national park now she is known as boishaki and here in the next, uh, second picture it can be seen that it is playing with its care caregiver at jungle mall at jaldapara national park uh, next slide please uh, one more achievement i would like to mention that it has been known for uh, it has been known from available documents that breeding of indian grey wolf hyena and fishing cat in captive condition are quite rare but being located in its natural habitat and getting conducive environment and dietary support most of the animals have bred here we can see uh, we can see from the slide that leopard wolf hyena fishing cat kalich pheasant etc have bred successfully within the zoo periphery uh, next slide please now about the upcoming project uh, jungle mall zoological park is planning to initiate conservation breeding program 
for Indian grey wolves and pangolin in a systematic manner, system, in a systematic and scientific manner. Being the natural habitat of both the species, it will be an interesting exercise and later, if successfully implemented, may be used to release in the wild after observing necessary protocols. Apart from that, few innovative ideas have been planned for the zoo, like uh, one 12D cinema hall to play wildlife related documentary and to create awareness among visitors. Apart from that, one more initiative is under active consideration that is one canopy walk inside the zoo to get a closer look and better uh, feel of the zoo landscape and feel uh, that the all animals are living in their natural habitat, not in any enclosure like situation. So uh, my final slide, thank you. Next slide, please. So now I'm concluding my presentation and once again expressing my sincere gratitude to the organizers from CZA to provide us such a platform uh, to showcase our zoo and providing necessary assistance and technical guidance whenever required. So this is it. Thanks from me and the entire team of Jungle Mall Zoological Park. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Patel, for giving an overview of the zoo and the kind of work that's happening there. Uh, we will now take up question and answers for today's talk. So, Dr. Singer, the first, singer, the first uh, set of questions is for you. Are you with us? Yes, yes. Okay. So, sir, uh, the first question for you is that do, the, uh, do adjutants in general show net site fidelity? Uh, yes, yes. Both the species show. Right. That's why, that's why I told you traditional nesting policies are very much important because of this. All right, sir. And uh, sir, is there any prominent feature that can help distinguish between males and females of the species? Um, which species? Of the lesser adjutant or the greater mm, adjutant? No, no, no. There is no sexual dimorphism, but you can see from the size and during the breeding uh, mating posture, you can recognize. Otherwise, uh, difficult. All right, sir. And so the third question is for you. Is there any difference in the nesting ecology of the lesser and the greater adjectives? Uh, come again. Is there any difference in the nesting ecology of the lesser yes, yes. and, and no, the no, greater right. Yes. As I told you, I have studied greater adjutant, not lesser adjutant. But from the literature and from the uh, uh, conversation with Prasant Sekia, I could understand this. Uh, the main issue is the breeding season. That is prior to greater children, lesser children beats at least one month earlier. So that could be a factor because the, when the commencement of rainfall, okay, and uh, rainfall is uh, ultimately cheeses. So, and their nesting breeding period is also less than the greater children. So that means the food supply and all, it is minimized in case of lesser children. So, and they get the um, better chance for living because of they start breeding earlier than the greater children. Could be. Right, sir. And so the next question for you is that what are the main conservation challenges faced by the species? See, it is almost general, you can say all those things. But as I have already mentioned, the conservation challenges means, for example, you have to go to the root. Otherwise, for example, habitat destruction is there because in the sense that these two species nest more often in the um, private land. Okay, we'll get the students. You may not find uh, uh, greater students breeding colony inside protected areas, but lesser students to some extent, for example, in Orang National Park, lesser students do breed there. But as, that's why it is under the mercy, uh, uh, at the mercy of the people who can fell the tree, because not always, but sometimes they do because of their uh, expansion of the houses and all. And I have witnessed so many things happening actually. And as I told you, traditional nesting colonies are one of the major factors. So when these the nest trees are failed immediately they cannot cope it up so they have to face the lag period and thereby they may lose one or two breeding seasons so this could be that is crucial for that and now above all other things are also there because uh, the feeding the feeding source resource should be protected not only the trees where do they nest but also the feeding areas as i told you the that's greater as well as a top carnivore so that is why biological magnification could have been there because the pesticides come through along with all those things, food chain and all. So the protection of wetlands is also very important. Unfortunately, it is not happening. 
Right, sir. And coming to the last question for you is that how important is community participation in the conservation of the species? Very much. Community participation is there because otherwise it cannot survive. As I told you, we could mobilize and to some extent, Dr. Purnima Burman has been successful to a fistful people in a particular area. Otherwise, because these nesting colonies are in private land. So if you don't air them or don't mobilize them, then it will be difficult to make them. And also whenever they are found in the uh, natural areas for foraging, this species should also give importance. That's why community participation is very, very essential for this. Right, so and we have one more question for you that uh, can zoos uh, can zoos provide an exit to conservation breeding site for the uh, adjutant species? There is no harm in trying. But I saw in, in Mumbai, lesser adjutants try to nest on the ground. The poor, poor fellow, I was, I was saying there is no other nesting platform. So they try to nest on the ground. So it could be. I saw one, one lesser adjutant in this. Uh, jungle mohol, uh, I mean, <clears throat> the zoo as well. If there are a pair, that could be tried. If you put the natural platform in the, if you erect, if there's no even trees, could be possible. But it is again experimental basis. We tried, mm, but traditional nesting colonies are always there because they get other resources within the within the limited areas. As I already mentioned, all are very nearby, right from feeding source to. Uh, uh, non beating season food source as well. Right, sir. So those were the questions for you. We now move on to questions for the zoo. So, Mr. Parthi, the, uh, you had Thank mentioned you. that. Yes. Uh, Mr. Parthi had mentioned that the Jungle Bar Zoological Park showcases the rich biodiversity of Natrite ecosystem. So, what species are considered uh, as ambassadors for that type of region yeah. for outreach activities in your zoo? So you are on mute. Please unmute yourself. So it is Indian grey wolf may be considered as, as the representative from this part of this kind of landscape. So we are planning to have a conservation breeding program for Indian grey wolf, which is naturally available in our landscape and adjacent areas. So that can be a representative from this part of uh, uh, landscape. But the major major issue is we uh, elephant is the flagship species of this region, but we don't have that kind of facility to house elephant in our zoo. But this is a territory of elephants, so it is linked with elephants, house of elephants, rather to say. All right, sir. And so the next question for you is that are there any research activities being carried out by the zoo? Uh, in collaboration with uh, West Bengal Zoo Authority, we have carried out few uh, research experiments that collection of scat and analy analyzing uh, collection of scats from herbivores and analyzing what kind of disease they are prone to. That kind of activities are going on in uh, smaller scale. We are trying to encourage uh, people from the different universities to take part. We will extend every possible help in this regard. Right, sir. And the last coming to the last question for you that uh, you had mentioned conservation reading is one of the future plans of the zoo. Apart from that, are there any other plans of the zoo for expansion or anything else if you'd like to add to it? We have we have a proposed enclosure for uh, Royal Bengal Tiger that is that will come up, but we are preparing the ground level work because before hosting uh, a species like uh, Royal Bengal Tiger, we have to uh, set up few standards. But, so we have to have full time caregiver for that kind of animal. So we are waiting for that. Apart from that, two innovative ideas we are trying to introduce in our zoo. That is, one is about in introducing a 12B cinema hall, theater hall. That is first of its kind in in zoo uh, periphery. Uh, that that would help us to uh, aware people about the wildlife or what role we should play. And one more point I also mentioned in my slide that uh, one canopy work because this this is an almost jungle like habitat. We one can feel that he or she is standing inside the jungle uh, watching all those animals. So we are planning a canopy work inside the zoo so we can have a better look about in the about the landscape and get a better visual. I think it would boost tourism as well. So good for the zoo. 
All right, sir. So those were the questions for you. With this, we come to an end to our week 69, Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo Talk. And on behalf of the Central Zoo Authority, I would like to thank both speakers, Dr. Hilal Jyoti Sunila, and to you, Mr. Parth Mukherjee, for taking time out of your busy schedules and joining us for this talk. I would also like to thank the audience who have been with us throughout, and I hope you learned more about the great adjutant stove, the less adjutant stove, and as well as the Jungle Mahal Zoological Park. And would also like to tell them that Jungle Mahal Zoological Park will be carrying out their outreach activities till the end of this week. So do, do join them in their uh, in the activities that they have planned if you are in Bengal. And I would also like to inform them that we'll be back next week with our week 70th uh, Know Your Species by Zoo Talk, which is on the Gharial and the Rasid Green Mini Zoo. So do tune in for that talk next week from 4 to 5 p.m. And once again, thank you so much to everybody. Namaskar. Like, well, I'm going to